Okay, you got to press that space bar, Lloyd, in order for us to hear you. Lloyd, I am. When you grow up with Bob Blackman as a football coach, and you go yeah. through a lifetime of ups and downs with the Illini, it's like being a Cubs fan. So when these opportunities come, you got to like grab them. Hey, leave my cubbies alone, Lloyd. <laughs> and I thought you were awfully generous in your description of the Illini. So, you know, usually it's downs and downs, but that's okay. I, I, I'm an Illini too. So. I love your cubbies. When they said they could <laughs> let fans into Wrigley, I said if fans can go into Wrigley, then my kids can go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Right, right, Laura? I think we have... Um, yes. It's A, it's seven o'clock and B, our plan commissioners here are in our um, petitioner, or I guess our consultant for the plan, for the comprehensive plan. So I think we can start. So I'm gonna call um, our meeting to order of the Glen Ellen Plan Commission for Thursday, March 11th, 2021. Um, and my name is Mary Locke and I am the chair of this commission. I have some prepared uh, notes because it we're uh, in a, still in the Zoom meeting um, a year later. Uh, it will be conducted by video conference through Zoom without a physically present quorum of the Plan Commission because of the disaster declaration related to the COVID-19 and public health concerns affecting the village of Glen Ellen. An in-person meeting at the Civic Center is not practical yet, but we're getting close, um, or prudent because of the disaster, and therefore the chairperson, commissioners, village manager, village attorney, and members of the public will not be, uh, not be physically present at the Civic Center. The commissioners and staff participating in tonight's meeting are in different locations in accordance with social distancing guidelines. It is important that the public hearing scheduled for tonight be heard to continue critical village business, which will enable ongoing construction, development, protection of property values, and promotion of the village's economic vitality. At this point, I would like to describe the remote proceedings of the plan commission for those of you who are not familiar with the process. We have two major items on tonight's agenda. This is one of the minor items. We will begin with a continued public hearing for the draft comprehensive plan. Staff and the village consultants have provided presentations on this agenda item at the December 10th, 2020 and the January 7th, 2021 plan commission meetings. The recordings of those meetings are available on the village's website for anyone that wishes to view them. Staff will be providing a brief update and then we will take public uh, today, tonight as to what might have changed, and then we'll take public comment on this item. Following the reading of any written comments, members of the audience who wish to speak will be asked to raise their hand, hand through the Zoom platform hand raising feature. Audience members will then be called on, unmuted, and given three minutes to comment. After you speak, you will be muted once again. Everyone who will be presenting information and or asking questions to this commission during a public hearing will be required to do so under oath and all comments will be recorded so that written minutes can be prepared of this meeting. After public comment, the plan commission will begin their deliberations and make a recommendation to the village board on the plan commission agenda item. We will then move to the second major item on tonight's agenda, a pre-application conference for a redevelopment project on the property located at 1182-1184 Roosevelt Road. Staff will begin with a brief introductory presentation. The floor will then be turned over to the development team for their presentation. At the conclusion of the presentation, we will take public comment on this agenda item and the plan commission will provide informal feedback to the petitioners regarding their proposal. Just a reminder that all speakers are asked to present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. If inappropriate language or comments are expressed during this meeting, we will mute the speaker and end their participation. With us tonight, for the benefit of those in the audience, we have our trustee liaison, Bill Enright, Community Development Director, Stacy Springer, who is administering this medium, uh, meeting on Zoom, Planning Manager, Kelly Purvis, uh, Planner, Katie Ashbaugh, our consultant from Hausiel Levine Associates, John Hausiel, and Barbara Hutton, uh, Dutton, excuse me, our recording secretary. Uh, at this po uh, point, uh, Barbara, will you please call the roll? Chairperson Locke. Here. Plan Commissioner Barry. Here. Plan Commissioner Brown. 
Here. Planning Commissioner Fanella. Here. Planning Commissioner Hemming Whitwin. Here. Planning Commissioner Mulheron. Here. Planning Commissioner Rodman. Here. Planning Commissioner Saeed. Here. Plan Commissioner Vandreska. Here. Chairperson Lack, we have a quorum. All right, thank you very much. So we do have a quorum, so we will uh, proceed. I need a motion to allow remote participation by the plan commission. So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion uh, by Commissioner Hemming Litwin and a uh, second by Commissioner Mulheron. May I have a roll call vote, please? Certainly. Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin. Yes. Plan Commissioner Mulheron. Yes. Chairperson Locke. Yes. Plan Commissioner Barry. Yes. Plan Commissioner Brown. Yes. Plan Commissioner Fennell. Yes. Plan Commissioner Rodman. Yes. Plan Commissioner Saeed. Yes. Plan Commissioner Fondresta. Yes. The motion passes. Okay. Uh, we'll go to the next agenda item, and that's public comment. Is there anybody in our attendee list that would like to address the uh, plan commission um, on a topic that is not on tonight's agenda? Uh, please raise your Zoom hand if that is your the reason for your uh, participation tonight. We yeah. have done, Chairman Locke. Yeah, I don't see anybody raising their hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next agenda item, and that's the approval of the uh, Plan Commission draft meeting minutes for January 28th, 2021. Um, is there any discussion on those minutes? If not, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. All right, I have a motion by Chair, uh, excuse me, Commissioner Mulheron and a second by Commissioner Hemming Litwin. Barbara, could you take the roll, uh, take the roll vote, call, bleh, roll call vote, please. Yes. Plan Commissioner Mulheron. Yes. Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin. Yes. Chairperson Locke. Yes. Plan Commissioner Barry. Yes. Plan Commissioner Brown. Yes. Plan Commissioner Fenella. Yes. Plan Commissioner Rodman. Yes. Plan Commissioner Saeed. Yes. Plan Commissioner Vandreska. Yes. The motion carries. Okay, thank you. Um, the next agenda item is also, uh, I'm seeking approval for some plan commission draft meeting minutes. This one for the meeting of February 25th, 2021. Is there any discussion on those minutes? And if not, may I have a, a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. I need a second, please. I second. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Hemming Litwin and a second by Commissioner Saeed. Um, may I have a roll call vote, please? Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin. Yes. Plan Commissioner Saeed. Yes. Chairperson Locke. Yes. Plan Commissioner Berry. Yes. Plan Commissioner Brown. Yes. Plan Commissioner Fanella. Yes. Plan Commissioner Mulheron. Commissioner Mulheron. Yes. Plan yes. Commissioner Rademan. Yes. Plan, oh, okay. Plan Commissioner Vondruska. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. Our next agenda item is a continuation of the public hearing uh, to consider an update to the village's comprehensive plan. Um, this is a public hearing that has been continued from two previous meetings. The first one that was on December 10th, 2020, last year. Uh, and the next one was in Jan January 7th, 2021. Um, I believe that, um, who is giving the presentation? Kelly, are you presenting? the modifications to this. Okay. Um, and you have already been sworn into this. You don't need to be re-sworn in and such. That's correct. Okay. Um, I guess take it away. 
Okay, we'll do. All right, thank you all very much for um, joining us this evening. Um, as uh, Chairperson Locke has already mentioned, we have already um, had a full presentation of the draft comprehensive plan at two separate um, public hearings. Those recordings are available on the village's website if anybody is interested in seeing those presentations or reviewing them again. Um, so we aren't gonna do a full presentation this evening. I'm just going to um, touch on a couple of things that have been changed since the last um, two public hearings. Um, to incorporate some of the comments that we received both from the public, from the plan commission, um, and also at the open houses that were held in November. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly go through those updates. Um, and then of course, if any of the plan commissioners have any questions, we'll open it up for conversation. Uh, we do have John House Seal here this evening. Um, he is our, the village's consultant on the um, comprehensive plan. Um, Brandon Nolan was not able to join us tonight, but John is more than capable of assisting with any questions that anybody might have. So without further ado, I will go ahead and share a screen here. Okay, everybody see my screen? All right, yes. um, thank you. Okay, so from page five, um, just a, a short little update here. We have added our um, the village's mission and values and vision. Um, the vision statement was here before, but the mission and values are actually a part of our strategic plan. Um, and by the request of uh, the village manager, we have added this um, to the comp plan as well. On page 18 of the draft plan, we did put in um, a new map with some areas that show priority areas for annexation. Um, the majority of these areas are either sort of on the fringe of commercial districts. So the Swift um, road area up here, there's an opportunity for, you know, an addition of some commercial space up here, maybe some multifamily. Um, and then otherwise just kind of like little pockets throughout the village where we're basically kind of surrounding these areas and it makes sense for us to annex them. Um, a lot of these areas do either have um, village utilities already or are areas where we're looking to expand our utilities in the future. Um, this you may recall from some of the conversations um, uh, during the other two um, public hearings related to the comp plan. This is page 21. It's the downtown sub area framework. Um, you'll note here that there is no longer a little pocket park here. That was um, a topic of discussion at one of the meetings. Um, so that has been removed from the plan. The parking section, um, it spans a couple of different pages. Page 24 and 25 actually have been updated just to reflect some new information, some updated information, um, and to just provide a little bit more of a realistic picture of what the parking um, situation is in our downtown at this time. Um, we incorporated some information from um, our streetscape plan that's moving forward, um, you know, detailing a little bit more about the parking that's available on street as well. The Duane and Lorraine site, based on some feedback from the plan commission, we added a little note here um, that talks about, you know, the potential to have a little bit more um, larger uh, of a parking garage component to this. If um, somebody did wanna use more of the parking lot to have a larger structure here, that's something that was mentioned at one of the public hearings as well. On the Duane and Forest site, there was so much interest in um, and so much talk about a park that we made a note um, in this section of the plan as well, um, just detailing that, you know, any kind of development here, you know, and in conjunction, of course, with the, um, uh, the Glen Ellen uh, Park District, because this is their property here, this park property, um, the village should try to expand and create more of an outdoor venue or space um, in conjunction with the redevelopment of this site. Um, from the Roosevelt Road sub-area framework plan, uh, there was previously a note about um, realigning Surrey Drive, and there was some conversation about that at one of the public hearings as well. So we've, uh, that note has been removed um, and is no longer part of the recommendation for the plan. Um, Throughout the Roosevelt Road uh, corridor, there's three different catalyst sites, and um, you'll notice the graphics have been shifted just a little bit, um, and that is just because we thought we were looking at a lot of the roofs and not as much of the buildings. So that's another change that you um, might have noticed is that the buildings have been shifted a little bit um, and angled differently. So the sites might look a little different. 
Um, we did add a section on micromobility. This was a comment from um, one of the participants, uh, I believe a resident, um, had made a comment about micromobility and the importance of kind of that last mile um, kind of transportation. Um, we have a lot of that stuff already in the plan kind of related to, you know, bike paths and um, pedestrian amenities and that kind of stuff, but I uh, really wanted to highlight just a little something more related to the micromobility as suggested. We did add a little section um, in the Save Routes to School section about the importance of connectivity of sidewalks um, south of Roosevelt Road along Route 53. Uh, again, that was something that was talked about at one of the public hearings and I believe was important to some of the plan commissioners as well. Uh, early Learning Campus, um, you know, a little call out related to some plans um, that the library and village and park district um, have for an early learning campus has also been added at the request of um, a participant in an early, actually, I think it was both in the public hearings and also in the open house meetings. Uh, we added, kind of beefed up the section on village awards and incentives because we do offer quite a lot to um, different businesses, incentives and stuff to come into the village and update a building or, you know, uh, renovate an exterior facade and things like that. So we kind of beefed that section up just a little bit. And lastly, we kind of um, made some tweaks to um, the action matrix. There was a lot of recommendations um, in the act action matrix, matrix, we just wanted to kind of tone it down a little bit, make sure that it was something that we could actually manage to measure over a period of time. Um, so we reduced the number of actions um, in the action matrix so that they're a little bit more measurable and manage manageable. That concludes the you know total number of changes that we did make to the plan. Um, you know, besides just kind of you know. Um, correcting, you know, some writing things and maybe a couple of little tweaks to graphics and things like that. Outside of that, you're looking at the same document that you have the last two um, meetings. And um, I did want to just ask the plan commission, we did want a little bit more feedback related to one of the catalyst sites. Um, we've had some significant interest um, from some different groups on the Exmoor Avenue and Roosevelt Road site. Um, right now, the comp planned simply suggest that this should remain commercial. Um, it is on Roosevelt Road in our commercial corridor in the C3 district. Um, what you were looking at, at on this page here, I have outlined on this page here, obviously the, the view is shifted. Um, so um, what we were hoping that you could give us a little bit of feedback on and, and if the plan commission recommends um, you know, moving forward in a different direction than what's currently on the plan, we'll just add a little note as an alternative um, to this particular catalyst site page. Um, but the question that before us um, is how the plan commission would feel about uh, rezoning this back half of this particular catalyst site to uh, a residential district for multifamily. We've had some interest in, you know, possible uh, affordable housing or uh, multifamily or townhomes or something along those lines um, for this back portion here along Taft Avenue. Um, staff thinks that, you know, this part along Roosevelt Road should really remain commercial frontage. And just to give the group an idea of the zoning throughout this kind of corridor, it is mostly commercial throughout. And if I expand out even further, you would certainly see um, that you know, along Roosevelt Road, it really is all commercial districts. You have C3, C4, and C6, all commercial districts, kind of all along Roosevelt Road. There are pockets of this R4 um, multifamily throughout as well. Um, so that's why we were thinking maybe this would be appropriate here to be rezoned as R4. Um, and again, just asking because there has been some significant interest. So if we can make a little note on you know this catalyst site page that you know, as an alternative, you know, the back half of Taft Avenue could be rezoned for um, a multifamily use, um, then we would do that if the plan commission thinks that that is a good idea. And that does conclude my presentation. And I'm happy to answer any questions and we can certainly open up for discussion if anybody had any other questions or comments on the plan thus far. I, I, I have one question. Um, <clears throat> Go ahead, Mohammed. I, I think on, uh, on the rear line of uh, Saray Drive, we removed our from our comprehensive plan. But I think tonight we are going to discuss on the pre-application of property on the east side of the uh, uh, Saray Drive and the restaurants and all other, maybe there are a lot of traffic will be coming in, cars coming in and coming out. 
if we realign this, maybe it is possibility that IDOT may approve a, a traffic light there. Can we add on to our comprehensive plan, uh, this one, realign uh, Surrey Drive? So we discussed this at length at the public hearing and it was the consensus of the plan commission um, that most people didn't want that. So that's why it was removed. Um, and I do believe that the catalyst site that we're, um, not catalyst site, the site that we're talking about this evening is a bit, I think it's a bit to the east um, of Surrey Drive. Yes. Yeah. East, I think, 1182 and 1184. Some, some um, restaurants and fast food is coming there. Uh, some commercial uh, kitchen there. So yes. maybe that will yeah. increase some some cars, uh, a lot of traffic. So maybe it is possible that the IDART may uh, approve this. So that's just a thought. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. Has anybody else have any questions for uh, Kelly at this point? related to the plan commission. Yeah, go ahead, David. Uh, my recollection of that discussion was, you know, I didn't think that the alignment of Surrey Drive was the critical part, but yet I still think the option of having a light to assist in pedestrian crossing, even though there's not an alignment, um, the reality of vehicles actually you know, traveling from north to south or south to north through Roosevelt Road is probably less than um, where vehicles would be turning. Um, so I, I, I think the comment, as long as how we've written it, that we st still think that there's a, a potential for a light there if IDOT would permit that, um, I still think it's a good idea. Okay. I think we do have some call outs on the bottom part. I'm just actually looking it up right now. A call out that looks at that, um, but doesn't contemplate, you know, the realignment of Surrey any longer. So um, let me just see, we've got So that intersection is called out um, for an intersection improvement and it says coordinate with IDOT to construct a highly visible crossing at Surrey Drive intersection with signalization and sidewalk connections to increase pedestrian accessibility. Does that address your concerns? And that's at the north side of Surrey? Let me share my screen. I'm going north side of Roosevelt, I'm sorry. Let me just share my screen so everybody can see. <laughs> So um, right here, the whole intersection here at Surrey Drive and Roosevelt Road, it's got this blue circle on it. Um, and so that's called out as an intersection improvement. And I'll scroll in so everybody can read what it says. Coordinate with IDOT to construct a highly visible crossing at the Surrey Drive intersection with signalization and a sidewalk and sidewalk connections to increase pedestrian accessibility. Does that work? I think so. Yeah, I, th I think, yes, this will work, yeah. Okay. okay. This is, uh, then we, we, we need not have to realign Surrey Drive. That's what you're saying, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, that, that's fine, that will work. Okay. Does anybody have more questions for Kelly about her presentation from the Planning Commission? Okay. Or all anything right. related to the plan at all is open for discussion. Do you want to discuss that um, Taft Road um, now, or do you want to, I mean, does anybody have any comments about that for the Exmoor Avenue and Roosevelt Road site, the, the south half of that? Uh, and, I, can give, I can give comments, but I thought maybe we were going to wait until we did deliberation on it. It's up to you, Kelly, whether you want it then or the, any thoughts now. But We can wait till deliberation. Okay. 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 Absolutely fine. I had a question about another area. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, the locate the Christian Science Church that's for sale at Hawthorne in Maine mm -hmm. is the early education center. Is there anyone looking at that site as a possibility? 
I haven't heard of it being looked at for an early education center. I have had a number of folks give me a call and ask about different um, kind of either adaptive reuses or complete, um, you know, redevelopment of that site. Um, and mostly yeah. for multifamily has been kind of what people are looking at or interested in. Um, oh. So, yeah, but nothing, I haven't heard anything about that being a specific site for childhood um, early development or anything. Okay, thanks. Sure. Any other questions for Kelly? Okay, well then thanks Kelly and we'll get on to that. On to the next step, which is, um, it, do we, um, Mr. Hofsey, you don't have anything that you're presenting tonight, right? So we can go into written comments from the public comment portion. Okay, let's do okay. that. Sounds good. Let me just pull a couple of those up really quickly. Okay. All right, so one that just came through on the project website was from Mr. Joe Howell. Um, he says, I looked through the comprehensive plan and did not see anything on the topic of community solar. And so I had the following questions. Was consideration given to using village property for a community solar arrangement? If no, why not? And if yes, why was it not considered beneficial enough to include in the plan? I understand the village has a renewable energy component to the electric aggregation program. The additional benefits of community solar within the village domain come from um, the visibility of making it a source of community pride and an inspiration to young residents. One of the business models I have seen for this type of arrangement has the municipality lease the space um, to an operator who owns and manages the equipment. Um, this has already been addressed in an open house. Please let me know where to look for that information. Thanks. So that was one of the comments. And then, as I mentioned, we did receive quite a few comments um, from the one, one community group um, and actually from their board of directors. I'm pretty sure almost all of them <laughs> sent me an email uh, related to uh, resolution 1904. So I'm just going to kind of read this. Um, in summary, because essentially all of the emails were the same. So I'm not gonna read all 10 of them, but um, do wanna make sure that this is acknowledged and read into the record. So dear uh, Glen Ellen Village Board of Trustees and Planning Manager, One Community, a nonprofit organization based here in Glen Ellen is missioned to actively celebrate and embrace our community's diversity and to raise awareness, acceptance and involvement um, of neighbors of all backgrounds. In February 2019, the Village of Glen Ellen passed Resolution 19-04 that resolved Glen Ellen to be an inclusive community and reaffirming its support for a community free of racism, hatred, and bigotry in all forms. We believe this is an important tenant on which all village action should be based. Therefore, it is our belief that Resolution number 19-04 attached should be included in the next Glen Ellen Comprehensive Plan, either in its body as an addendum uh, to guide decisions by staff and public officials in the future, and as a declaration of values, this village holds true. Thank you on behalf of uh, One Community Board of Directors, Sonia Irwin, um, the president of One Community, and then again, as I mentioned, the majority of the board of directors, including Sonia Faulkner, um, Monica Flores, Hal, Hal Hawthorne, uh, Joyce Hawthorne, um, Sonia Irwin, Erica Nelson, Nancy Payne, Eric Peterson, Kim Reed, Gilda Ross, and Dr. Dr. James Shannon, Reverend George Smith, all sent me emails as well. Um, and just as a quick note inside, Resolution 1904, um, is essentially a resolution of the Village of Glen Ellen Board of Trustees reaffirming its support for a community free of racism, hatred, and bigotry in all forms. So um, just so that the plan commission knows, um, this is something that we have been directed to attach to the draft comprehensive plan um, in the appendix. And um, the village values section will include a note about resolution uh, 1904 as well as requested um, by this group and um, by village president, uh, Jerry Pasoulis as well. And that uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly you had mentioned that there, this was a community group. Is it a formal one with a name or just a group of community members? It's actually called One Community. That is the name of it. Okay. okay. It's a matter of corporation, Mary, that uh, composed of a lot of groups to, to create community events in the village. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. And so those are the, the written comments. That, that is you, the written did comments. You say that? That okay. Yes. Okay. And so um, now there's an opportunity for members of the, um, the attendees who are listening and participating on tonight's call. If you wanted to speak to the plan commission, now would be a time to raise your Zoom hand. Uh, and if you uh, can, if you'd like to speak to the plan commission about your thoughts about tonight's, uh, what you heard in the comprehensive plan and modifications, and um, you have up to three minutes to do so. Is there anybody would like to speak to the plan commission this evening? We do have Dawn Bussey, um, the executive director of the library. So I'm going to move her over. Don, okay. um, go ahead. You are um, unmuted, so you can go ahead and speak. Excellent. Thanks, Stacy. Good um, evening. Before um, she speaks, because it's a public oh, hearing, do we need to Excuse swear me. her in? Yes. OK. Go ahead, Barbara. Would you please state your name and address for the public record? Dawn Bussey, 400 Duane Street. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right, good evening, Dawn. Thank you for joining us. Certainly, thank you very much. I just wanted to say thank you for incorporating the section on the early learning campus on page 62. It's something that the schools and the park district and the library really look forward to trying to develop within our community and we appreciate your support. Okay, thank you. All right, I think she can move, be moved back. Is that correct, Dawn? Yes. Okay, and then is there anybody else from the uh, attendees that are, are here with us tonight that wanna to speak to the plan commission this evening? I'm not seeing any hands raised. Uh, I'm not either, and, and that is just okay. Uh, thank you for being here and listening. So, um, <laughs> but if there are no more participants from participation participants from the public, um, then we can close this public hearing, and I need a motion to do so. <clears throat> so moved. Second. I have a motion from uh, Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin, and I have a second from Plan Commissioner Mulheron. May I have a roll call vote, please? Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin. Yes. Plan Commissioner Mulheron. Yes. Chairperson Locke. Yes. Plan Commissioner Berry. Yes. Plan Commissioner Brown. Yes. Plan Commissioner Fanella. Yes. Plan Commissioner Rodman. Yes. Plan Commissioner Saeed. Yes. Plan Commissioner Fundreska. Yes. The motion to close the public hearing passes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and now it's time for plan commission deliberations regarding uh, our comfort level with the plan commission and its, or excuse me, the comprehensive plan in its current form. Um, does anybody like to share their thoughts from the plan commission? Should we recommend it to the board? I'll, I'll go. Go ahead. Um, regarding the strip along Taft Avenue, that back half, being, uh, would you say that would be our four residential is what we're really looking at there? Because that would be cons that would be pretty consistent on a large portion of Roosevelt Road on the south side and north side in that area, right? So um, behind Jewel and that strip mall, there's housing, and then on the north, just on the north side of there, there's housing back there. So I'm perfectly fine with splitting it up that way. Um, especially if you have interest in re having somebody redevelop that site at the moment. Thank you. I totally agree with Tracy. I think it makes a lot of sense. As do I, and I appreciate the uh, summary level. Good, thank you. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. You know, my only concern is that what's left on the commercial side of things is probably pretty shallow and limits anything that has any um, strong, uh, you know, a strong tenant. Um, I, you know, I'm 
just worried about how that gets broken down and and what's left if if that's really going to attract some some good businesses along Roosevelt. That's my only concern. Because if you look at the other blocks, you know, go go to the go to the other side down Taft where uh, we've had development and and using the full depth of that block is pretty essential to get some um, proper commercial use and flow of traffic. But other than that, I think the the residential is not inappropriate for that location, though. It's, Thank you. Mark, I did throw up um, the zoning map and along with the parcel um, layer. And so you can see the depth of commercial um, is generally consistent, um, but there are some incursions as um, Commissioner Hemming Litwin said um, of R4 behind the commercial um, both on the north side and the south side. And, and even in this area, the commercial does get rather um, thin in depth. But you, as you know, we don't have a lot of commercial on Roosevelt Road that has a significant amount of depth. Um, really, it's, uh, you know, Baker Hill is, is, um, can accommodate some larger redevelopment along with Roosevelt Glen here. Um, so, um, I'm not saying it's it's not a good use for um, for multifamily residential, especially because um, you have some commercial uses that do front end Roosevelt that could remain. So I just wanted to bring that up so everybody could see it. Okay, thank you. I mean, I, I just my personal take is that Panfish Park is such a lovely site to have multifamily there would be uh, really a nice setting. So. Stacey, what is the zoning at Baker Hill? Um, okay, so C6 is a unique zoning classification. Um, really, it's a planned unit development zoning district. It's um, the only place that we have C6 in the village are these two locations. And um, it was set up to allow complete flexibility in development. Uh, really, there's no uses, there's hardly, there's no regulations, there's no setbacks, there's really um, nothing it was hey, let's let somebody come in, propose a really good use for the land, um, approve the PUD, and that's what the zoning is. Uh, so it was a, a zoning district, I think they, the, the village um, board approved back around the time of Baker Hill, or right before. Okay. Daisy, isn't the area just, just across the street, so the, where, um, Pickwick places, or what used to be Pickwick place. Hasn't there been discussion of maybe some stuff happening here in the future? I mean, some consolidation of lots and stuff. Yeah, like I, like I was under the impression whoever owned the main building there has owns a bunch of these buildings or is trying to for possible redevelopment over time. Yes, so okay. um, that property owner not only owns the main building, but this side building over here. Um, they also own the L-shaped, uh, we call it the California building, um, the building that PJ's is in, the building where the nurse is in, and also where the dance studio is, also where um, the craft store is over here. Um, they also own the former IDG building, um, and there's a painter's building it, it looks like it's actually part of this building this used to be an old painting contractor building they picked this lot up as well so yes there is um they've been contemplating some possible um renovations or revisions there at some point in the future i'm not sure if he will move forward with that or not thank you So do other plan commissioners have uh, comments in either the Exmoor Roosevelt Road or Exmoor Taft portion of that commercial or any other comment regarding the comprehensive plan? I mean, this is really a opportunity to talk about the whole comprehensive plan or ask questions, give us your thoughts on how you're feeling about the modifications that were made. I can speak to the modifications. I was uh, appreciative that 
you took all of our feedback into account and made those changes. I think that they were all uh, really on point to what not only we brought up, but that the community had brought to, to light. Um, the Exmoor piece, um, I'd, I'd like to see us be very flexible and open. I'm not saying we need to go to a C6 district. That sounds like a little wild west to me, but um, willing to, to be open to whatever a developer brings forward. I think that it could be residential or commercial and um, would just like to see that piece have some great use. All right, so Kelly, the proposal is really just to uh, plant that seed and to allow for it. It wasn't to change the zoning. It was just to say, and in addition to commercial, uh, Glen Ellen would entertain an R4 multifamily. Is that correct? That, Am I, that is okay. correct. We just wanted to add a note to that catalyst site indicating that there could be some other options or, or alternative solutions that the, uh, the village would be willing to consider on that site as well, outside of okay. just commercial. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of, I, I, Angela, isn't that what you just said? Okay, I, I just wanted to make sure I was understanding there wasn't a nuance that I was missing here. No, I could, that sounds perfect to me. Okay, okay. Any other comments? Thoughts? What is this um, early education center? This is the first I've heard of it. Um, so it's a collaborative, and I hope I don't botch this. Um, I can kind of read the little section if you'd like me to, but it's a, it's basically a collaborative between the park district, school districts, and library um, for some early education opportunities. Let me just see if I can pull it up really quick, if you'll give me just a moment. I just lost it again. Sorry, I just closed out of everything. So, all right. Um, so early learning campus. Overall, Glen Ellen places high value on early learning opportunities. There is strong collaborative relationship between the village of Glen Ellen, the Glen Ellen Public Library, and the Glen Ellen Park District. Uh, the collaborative relationship is an important factor when moving forward to investigate the possibility of a comprehensive community-wide early learning campus. A joint venture such as this would allow both school districts and communities they serve to partner with the village library and other community agencies in providing a state of the art um, early learning campus. Benefits of the joint venture early learning campus include ability to cluster appropriate staff and specialists in an effective and efficient manner, ability to develop an environment that is optimal for preschool age students and their specialized learning needs, ability to expand the program and to make it available for more students and families, Ability to ease crowding in the elementary schools. Um, multiple studies have shown that investing in preschool has several long-term benefits for the community and can be one of the most high impact places to spend educational dollars. So that's the summary that has been included. Okay, good. All right, thank you, Colleen. Would that then impact um, like Main Street Park District building and Spring Rec for potential redevelopment or is this strictly in addition to it already exists? I don't think it exists. I think they're, um, I, I shouldn't really speak because I don't actually know, but I think um, they're just looking for an opportunity to provide this. Um, I don't think that it exists at this time. I believe that's the case. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just said I believe that's the case. And yeah. I'm sure um, if we were headed in the wrong direction, uh, Don Bussey's hand would go up, so. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions about the plan commission or thoughts you wanna share? Because if uh, there isn't, it is, we feel strong enough that we could make a formal recommendation to the village board to support the draft comprehensive plan in this form. And if so, we don't really have a prepared motion, but I think we we need one, right? Is that correct? We need a motion to say yes. we support it and need to go forward. 
Okay. That's correct. I did want to mention, I did see um, John Houseel's hand up. I don't know if that was an error, um, but he had had his hand up for a moment. So I'm not sure if we can. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. No, it was not an error. All I was going to suggest was, and I don't want to dilute the conversation, was um, Commissioner Roadman, um, when you talked about not wanting to dilute that Roosevelt frontage with the commercial viability of it, I think when we, it's about a 300 foot depth. And if you look a little bit further over on the corner, you can see where Chipotle brand new was developed on the front half of that piece. And then behind it is another building and another use totally separate. Um, I think we can put a note in there and probably should that we can say we would be considerate of or open to a residential component on the back half, uh, recognizing that the priority for the corridor is viable and vibrant and attractive commercial. So we want to open the door for flexibility, but we want to, in the same time, I think, reinforce that we're doing so, but not at the uh, delusion of commercial viability there. So if someone can come forward creatively with something to do both, that's great, but they can't do residential on the back that would recreate a remnant frontage that's useless. So I think we can, we can do that very easily in our comment or our amendment. And I think it's a very good point that you made. Well, it is not only that, but because of parking in the wetlands over there. Right. Right. So I, I think that's a real good point that uh, the village should be open to it, provided commercial remain uh, the key priority for the frontage. So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I do see a question, so I'm going to click on it and just read it out loud. Um, it says that the, this is from Elena Kassman. Is she part of the attendee list? And I don't know, if, I'm guessing she is, yep. Yeah. It says last meeting, there was a conversation on lighting and dark sky compliant street lighting. Has this been addressed or resolved as a recommendation? So there is um, specific recommendations related to dark sky. Um, it's actually in each of the um, framework plans. I can pull it up if you'll just give me a moment. I'm sorry, I have a cat in the background that you might be hearing who's going nuts at the moment. Actually, let me just share my screen. That'll be easier. Why? Okay. Okay. Are you guys seeing my screen? Not yet. Not yet. It says that you've started sharing your screen, but it hasn't popped up yet. So maybe it'll just take a second. It, dark sky is specifically addressed at five different points in the plan. So it's it's in at several different locations, dark sky is addressed. Thank you. Okay, that might be the answer we need. <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's in the sub area frame, some of the, um, the sub area plans, the sub area framework. But it's it's discussed uh, and and mentioned and referenced at five different locations throughout the document. Okay, That's and Kel, at least on my screen, your your screen sharing didn't come up; it just okay. blanked out. Right. So you may want to unshare it at this point. I'm trying to get my screen to just come back up in general. I don't really know what happened. The joys of Zoom. Blame your cat. <laughs> it's probably your fault, you know. <laughs> All right, I, there we go. And regarding the dark sky comment, we've had some other things that have popped in and out of the, you know, where we've met on things where dark sky was brought up, like in the little plaza area and stuff. Right. So it might not, they might be talking about some other meetings we've had in between the comprehensive plan, um, just because it did come up, I know, for the plaza area by the, um, civic center for the pass through the and stuff yeah. so correct and you're right that was um on january 7th at the same time we were doing um one of the draft comprehensive plan meetings um i did want to note that i did do a little overview for the environmental commission as well on the comp plan um they had asked you know kind of wanted to know what the um, environmental recommendations were and so i'd gone through it with them and they mentioned the dark skies um section as well. So we I'd gone through that with them as well. Um, I did want to note um, mostly that the dark skies recommendations have to do with where we have commercial um, budding up next to residential and making sure there's no spillage um, over 
you know, property lines and stuff like that where there's more sensitive uses. Yeah, the majority of the references are in the downtown sub area, the Roosevelt Road, the Stacy's Corner. So, yes. Thanks, John, for looking that up. <laughs> I just couldn't get it to work. Searching right. the PDFs are a wonderful thing. Yes. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments? All right. Tracy, did you have a recommendation ready? And I'm, I'm gonna wing it and let's hope this works. <laughs> After hearing the updates made to the comprehensive plan based on inputs through workshops, open houses, and three now plan commission meetings, um, the to, we will, uh, this is a motion to approve the, it's an initial plan, right? A draft. A draft plan of the comprehensive plan as discussed in today's meeting. Okay. I think that's a pretty good plan, uh, motion and I need a second. <laughs> John. All right. I have a motion by Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin and a, a second by Plan Commissioner Mulheron. May I have a roll call vote, please? Plan Commissioner Hemming Litwin? Yes. Plan Commissioner Mulheron? Yes. Chairperson Locke? Yes. Plan Commissioner Barry? Yes. Plan Commissioner Brown? Yes. Plan Commissioner Fanella? Yes. Plan Commissioner Rodman? Yes. Plan Commissioner Saeed? Yes. Plan Commissioner Vondreska? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, thank you, Barbara. All right, um, thank you, Mr. Halsil, for all you've done so far. Uh, there's you. another step going to the village board and I'm assuming they're going to take a look at this and at what meeting would that be? So we had originally planned for this go to the village board right after you guys to a workshop, but um, with the change in the board um, coming so quickly, we wanna make sure that we're utilizing our time efficiently. So we're going to present this um, in, at the April workshop meeting once we already know who the next round of trustees and, um, um, you know, the new president is going to be. Um, and then, so it'll be the first workshop meeting in, well, the only workshop meeting in April. And then we've also slated a workshop meeting in May. And then it should go to the village board then in June um, at an actual meeting for approval, you know, okay. if they're okay with <laughs> what we're presenting, so. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, and thank you all the attendees who uh, participated, who came for this agenda item. Uh, some of you might be here for the next one too, but I also uh, thank you for your participation and, uh, and kind of watch for the April and the May workshops and, and possible June board meeting uh, for further discussion and uh, of the plan, of the comprehensive plan. So thank you all. Thanks everyone. You're welcome. Uh, our next topic is a pre-application meeting to consider an adaptive use, reuse of an existing commercial strip center located at 1182 and 1184 Roosevelt Road. Uh, I believe it is just a pre-app, so there is no public hearing portion of it. Um, a little more informal, Katie's doing the presentation. So thank you, Katie, for hanging around all this time. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate it. And you're going to give your start with your presentation. Is that correct? Fry the coop. Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. I was thinking. <laughs> it's up. Okay, you're up. All right. So, um, as Chairperson Locke said, thank you for sticking around for this presentation. Um, this is for a pre application to consider renovation to existing strip center at 1182 and 1184. Roosevelt Road. So um, for those in the audience listening, um, for a pre-application meeting, the plan commission does not take any formal action. Um, the petitioner is just requesting feedback on some items. We've been, um, staff has included some discussion topics on which we would like for them to provide feedback to the petitioner, um, which we'll go through at the end. Um, but again, no votes are being taken. Um, should the petitioner wish to go ahead and go forward with this project, um, the plan commission will then conduct a public hearing and make a recommendation to the village board 
on um, the following approximate zoning approvals, um, preliminary and final planned unit development with deviations. Um, I'm going to touch on a couple of the deviations we've identified at this time, but um, until a full plan review is noted, um, there may be additional once the public hearing comes. Um, a special use permit for two drive-throughs, uh, zoning text amendment to add the use uh, commissary or commercial kitchen to the C3 service commercial district as a special use, a special use for the commissary or commercial kitchen, um, exterior appearance, and then um, some sign variations. So after the plan commission would make a recommendation to approve, approve with conditions or deny, um, the village board would make a final determination on those items. Um, so with that, I'll just go ahead and go through some descript site background um, describing the site. So the subject property, it's located on the north side of Roosevelt Road, um, mid block between Surrey Drive and Royal Glen Drive. Royal Glen Drive is a private drive, um, which we'll touch on later how that may affect uh, the project. Um, the property is just under two acres in size and the existing building is a one story multi-tenant commercial building. Um, it's about 21,500 square feet. And this is the easiest slide I have where you can see the parking, but uh, there's 86 parking stalls on the site currently. Uh, the property is zoned C3 service commercial. It's surrounded on the east and west sides by the same zoning districts. Um, immediately to the east is Golden Walk 2, and then immediately to, or immediately to the west is Golden Walk 2, and immediately to the east is a former medical clinic that's now vacant. And then to the north is a multifamily, and also to the northeast and the R3 and R4 zoning districts. Um, the entire south side of Roosevelt is uh, the village of Lombard. So these are the existing conditions. Um, I just kind of touched on those, but again, there's 86 stalls. Um, this is actually a conforming parking lot if you apply the one parking stall per 250 square feet um, requirement. I'll um, flip through these quickly, just street view to get everyone familiar. Um, this business currently is House of Brides on the southernmost tenant space facing Roosevelt. And this is uh, looking uh, northeast at the uh, strip center from Roosevelt Road and then looking northwest. Um, the almost outdated now, <laughs> a comprehensive plan had the future land use designation as service commercial for this site. Um, and I didn't wanna touch on this since you've already been talking about it. So, um, but just the one slide. Um, to go through what they're proposing before I kind of go through the site plan, um, they're essentially going to be splitting the building into two. Um, the, both the Eastern and Western building will have a drive-through with an associated restaurant. Um, the restaurant Fry the Coop will be the Western tenant on the West building. Um, Slice Factory will be the Western tenant on the East building. Um, the Eastern building also will have the commissary to the rear building. So this is the site plan. So you can kind of see the building is now in two and they've um, kind of showed the division of the multi-tenant uh, floor layout. Um, there were two uh, tenant layouts provided. Um, I The analysis prepared in the staff report was based off of this uh, floor layout, um, but you were also given the other option layout as well. And the petitioner can speak more to that if you have questions about which way they're thinking they might go. Um, so to kind of touch on the operations briefly, um, Fry the Coop, it's um, just over 3,800 square feet in area in that westernmost tenant space. Um, the petitioner has said that they will have about 40 to 50 guest seats in that space and um, approximately eight employees. Their operating hours are gonna be 11 to 9 p.m. Um, the Slice Factory will um, have about 20, 12 to 20 guest seats and six employees operating 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. 
the uh, commercial kitchen, um, that commercial kitchens will serve Fry the Coop and then a couple other locations of Fry the Coop. Um, they'll have 15 employees and operate from 7 to 3 p.m. So the two drive-throughs to kind of break down how they're planning to use that. Um, Fry the Coop, they expect 25 to 30 customers an hour with their peak hours of 11, 30 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 5 to 7, so lunch and dinner time. Um, during those peak hours, they expect 40 to 45 customers an hour, and they have like about a three minute wait time. The Slice Factory will have slightly fewer customers per hour with 15 to 20, and their peak hours are only dinner time. Um, they're anticipating 35 to 40 customers an hour during the peak dinner time, and also a 30 minute average wait time. Um, one more item to note, the second tenant um, or the Eastern tenant of the West building, there is an outdoor seating area proposed for that of a thousand square feet. Um, the tenant has not yet been confirmed. Um, I think they have an idea of maybe possibly another food use, but at this time it's just an outdoor seating area. So this is the anticipated circulation for the drive-through. Um, the yellow arrows kind of indicate how customers could end up accessing the site to use the drive-through. So your eastbound customers are gonna turn left off of Roosevelt Road and they can enter the full access drive off of Roosevelt Road. Um, it's that point of entry that um, staff would like some feedback from the plan commission on and to share with the petitioner about navigation through the site um, because the way the circuit, the counterclockwise circulation is proposed, the um, customers are gonna have to go on to someone else's property or to the private Royal Glen Drive to go to either drive through. Um, eastbound traffic could also of course go to Glen or Royal Glen Drive. Um, westbound traffic, it would be the same situation except turning right, um, but the signage at the uh, southeast drive will be a little confusing once you enter the site. Um, the green arrows are just intended to kind of show the bypass lanes for both of the drive through So if someone isn't going through the drive through or they're trying to figure out where they're going, um, they can get around the drive through traffic. Uh, this uh, image I did overlay um, onto the aerial, but this image is from the petitioner. So they, the red is the refuse uh, pickup circulation and the blue is the loading uh, circulation. So they anticipate the refuse pickup to be uh, six, six days a week. Um, and the refuse, if I can figure out how to use the pointer in Zoom, um, Katie, please. you can just use your mouse. We can see your Oh, mouse. okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is the refuse area. Um, this is a potential point of conflict that staff's identified. So uh, we would like some feedback from the plan commission on this area specifically. Um, although they may have, depending on when the refuse is picked up, um, you still may have staff going out there to empty the garbage during the day for the two food uses. So that might be potential issue. Um, regarding the loading delivery, um, they have indicated that they're gonna be um, using that area every day um, before 10 a.m. So I did know the commissary is gonna give, be providing the food for Fry the Coop on the Western tenor on the West building, but um, they will be receiving food daily. Um, you may, the plane commission may also want to ask for feedback on the delivery for the other food use. Um, and if there's other retail users, they may also be getting shipments and how that would be handled. Um, and again, they're also going to have to cross over um, this other property that is not under contiguous ownership to get to this site. Um, I assume that may, that may be occurring already with the current retail, 
but if you combine the drive-through traffic in addition to that, how that operationally may overlap is something you may want to discuss. And now my slide is not working. Okay, <laughs> so the proposed elevations, they provided two renderings. Um, they were both of the south elevation, which this is looking north from Roosevelt Road. So I'm just showing the one in the slide here tonight. Um, but it looks like a primarily brick building. Um, we provided some feedback on that, but generally we're looking for feedback pertaining to the signage. Um, and it's a rendering, so it's not a black and white line drawing, but they are showing a bare bulb sign for Fry the Coop, um, which would require a sign variation. Um, I didn't highlight it in red, but the festoon lighting also over the patio, uh, that would require a deviation um, to allow a larger pergola than what's permitted, but the festoons also are not permitted because those are only allowed in the C5 B, or C5A and C5B districts. So if they're needed anywhere else, they would need a sign variation for that. And then from a design and architectural standpoint, um, it appears that the, they're including wood um, as accent materials in the design. So if you have any feedback on the use of wood, what type of wood, if you think it's appropriate or not, um, providing some feedback on that would be appreciated. So, and I am going to flip back. I do need to touch on the other known deviation on the site plan. So the other known deviation, in addition to the pergola, um, the building is right on the lot line practically. So it's about a, just under half a foot from the east lot line. So they would need a deviation for that as well to make that conforming. So for the required approvals, um, there are seven required at this time. Um, the preliminary and final planned unit development with the two deviations, the one for the interior side yard setback of um, 4,500 feet, <laughs> where 10 feet is required along the east interior side lot line, and then deviations to allow the proposed pergola in terms of size and height are required. We don't have those dimensions, so I can't provide the exact degree of the relief. Um, the next item, the special use permit to allow the two drive-through establishments for the two restaurants in the C3 district. Um, the next two are related to the commercial kitchen. So first we would need to have a zoning text amendment to add that as a special use in the C3 district. And then the special use permit to allow it. Um, the next two are related to the signage being the bare bulb illumination and then the festoon lighting. Um, both of those are regulated in the sign code. And then lastly, the exterior appearance approval for the building improvements. So um, we have a few items for plant. We're requesting plan for commission feedback. Um, just information on the operation, operational details and how the different functions of the site are gonna overlap and interact with each other. Um, site access from Roosevelt Road and how the drive-through customers are going to enter and navigate and then leave the site. Um, the loading and delivery area for all of the tenants, the loading area is primarily just to the north of the east of the east building, um, but there's also another, there's two other tenants in the uh, west building. Um, the location of the refuse area specifically um, what the plan commission feels about the commercial kitchen use in general on Roosevelt Road, and um, if there's any um, prospective ways you would prefer to see a text amendment drafted. Um, the signage with the bare bulbs in the Fry the Coop sign, the festoon lighting over the outdoor seating area, and then the building materials and design. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, I'm here for any questions. All right, thank you, Katie. Uh, does anybody from the plan commission have questions for Katie at this point? Katie, sure. just really quick. You said that the medical building to the east, is that up for sale? I believe so, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
So Katie, there's no cross access easement or anything in place currently. So traffic that comes across the property to the east is just doing so as a convenience. There is an easement, but there may need to be one, like it may need to be expanded and the rights may need to be expanded now that the it's more of a necessity to get to that particular drive through. They that's the only way to get to the entry. Okay. And so that easement with that property, and then there's also an easement established for the private road. That is dedicated as a that's a private road. So, so what are the implications? It being a private road, you so, still need some sort of easement agreement. That's our understanding. Yes, the plat is very old, um, and yeah. I think the engineers would prefer that there be some updates to that, especially with the additional traffic that's going to be going through it and um, wearing down the asphalt and everything. So, All right. Um, maybe to further the answer to that question, I don't think, um, Katie or Kelly, that we have actually received a copy of those easements yet. Um, obviously, it's something we would request if um, we go forward and somebody would need to reach out, obviously, to the Royal Glen Homeowners Association who we understand is responsible for Royal Glen Drive. Um, so the, we're very preliminary at, at this stage, very conceptual, um, just trying to get some initial feedback on um, the feasibility of, of this type of project. I like the design. It's just my concern is you have two left turning lanes off of Roosevelt, which is very tough at that point. And then you have a non-designated you know, access agreement with the uh, East property owner. Yeah, I, you know, I like, I like the fee, I like the new design of the building. I think it's a nice update and, um, you know, looking at your list here in terms of, I don't think the festoon lighting would be a problem, you know, tastefully done and all that. Um, I just think the, egress, ingress, in and out, the easement issues with the property next door, I can't imagine, you know, they want all of that traffic going through their piece of property. Um, right now, I just personally think that that is a mess to getting this, uh, trying to approve a project like this, just because it's not a good solution for getting in and out of there. Yeah, I, I drove that today and, uh, I think it's challenging, and I, I think the uh, um, I, I would expect that um, the owner of the east property would not be too thrilled with the with the, the amount of traffic we're talking about, and I'm sure that the uh, homeowners association there's going to be a uh, some concern concern with them more than even just wear and tear. And then I drove back that that part of the road from. From the private drive to the back building is, is very rough. Now I assume that could be that could be repaved, but my my concern is is the traffic flow is 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 very challenging there. And I think all the traffic sh should circulate on the owner's property. I don't know how you're gonna do that. Um, the second concern I have is a commercial kitchen. Um, the, the commercial kitchen means a lot of cooking. And uh, uh, we're talking about an area uh, where there's a fair amount of residential pretty close by. We don't know what the, what the odors are gonna be coming off of that, but I have concern with that. And I have concern with the amount of, of, of business traffic in terms of, of supplying, uh, supplying the uh, products to other stores. So I, I think, I, I agree with Jimmy. I, I like the design. I think it's creative, but I think that, in my view, I, don't, I couldn't support it unless there was all of the, let's say, owned the property next door. If they bought the the old, uh, the infamous uh, clinic next door property, and then they can convert it, they have a, a lot easier uh, 
uh, operations. That's that's my my view on it. Um, is, is the petitioner here tonight to speak to us? Yes. Okay. Would you like so, me to promote them? Well, yeah, some of the yeah, some of these questions and concerns the petitioner can address, and, and I think there's others uh, concerns and such that might be there. So I'm gonna say thank Katie, thank you. If, if uh, don't I, go anywhere, got, we I, might we I, might I, have I, more questions. Okay, go ahead, Mohammed. He has one more question for Katie. Yeah. Um can you give, give us the feedback on the um Storm water collection system there on the property? So they will need to improve that storm water system over there. Um, we, it's gonna need to be improved. Um, and Amy McKenna, our senior civil engineer is gonna be reviewing it. Um, but we didn't look at this too much. We were more wanting the feedback of the uses specifically um, noting that whatever they're required to do from a stormwater perspective, that that's code requirement. It's not necessarily um, going to be depend. It's not necessarily something like super zoning related, other than um, like if they already have a system. They're just going to need to update it. Okay. Thank you. Answer? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else have a question for Katie before we move on to the petitioner? Okay, again, thank you, Katie. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more questions. No, I'm, I'm not. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be muted and wait to be called on. <laughs> okay, um, can you uh, un unshare so that we can, uh, I can see everybody, yeah, and then we can bring in, the, I think it looks like the petitioner is in. I, so, I um, moved over four people. Oh, okay, so I don't know who's speaking, but I see four people I don't know very well. So <laughs> uh, who is, who is taking the lead for this? Good evening, commissioners. This is Rob Gamreth. I'm with Burke Warren and uh, counsel for the applicant. We're excited to be here tonight to discuss the proposed adaptive reuse and more importantly, to receive your feedback um, through the wonders of technology. I think I have uh, the developer, CJ Carey and uh, Dominic Kanata on with us as well with Brookline and also uh, Cal uh, with FH, Cal Muhammad with FHS Build, who's the architect and the co-developer. Um, rather that you've already received an extensive and, and uh, detailed staff report, so then rather than us revisiting that, I thought maybe it would be helpful just for um, Brookline to spend a brief moment describing who they are, their background real quickly, and then maybe try to respond to some of the concerns that have already been raised. And then I'll ask uh, Cal Muhammad to do the same with FHF, if that's okay uh, as a means yeah, of that's, proceeding. Yeah, that'd be fine. Hi, everybody. Hey, CJ. Hi. Just want to introduce myself. I'm CJ Carey. This is my partner, Dominic Canato. Oh, I was wondering where Dominic was. I know that uh, <laughs> Mr. Garman, Garman said something about Dominic. And I'm like, you know, you, you see all these Zoom names and uh, I didn't see that one there. So, okay, got it. Thanks for your time. Sure, thanks for being here. So we, we brought this project to light here about a couple months ago, about three months ago. And, you know, these are the kind of projects that we like to do throughout the Chicagoland suburbs. Uh, we actually work hand in hand with FHS a lot um, to do these projects in collaboration. Um, we've got, you know, we've been doing this for about 10 years now. Uh, we started off in the real estate business, just doing the brokerage and being the leasing agents and things like that for other developers. And then we started to get the game ourselves. So um, we tend to find these centers that could use some life and revitalization and uh, try to find synergistic tenants that work well together that bring life to the community. So, um, you know, that's why we brought this project to light. And, you know, we probably, again, we collaborate with FHS to help us design the site and, and you know, we're open to ideas, what the community has and what they're looking to have there as far as tenants and also as far as the design goes. Uh, you know, it's kind of just all preliminary. We wanted to you know, have this meeting so we can see what you guys are looking for and see what would fit best here. Um, uh, Cal, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about FHS and what you guys do and then uh, you know, we can talk a little bit more about the concerns that you guys had. Sure. Hi. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Cal. I'm with FHS Design Build. We've been in business uh, for a little over 20 years now. We've uh, done multiple uh, 
strip centers, shopping plazas, things like that. Commercial is our main uh, our main business. That's uh, basically what we do: design and construction. We we, we help a lot of developers, similar to CJ here, uh, go through the process. A lot of variances and dealing with a lot of different villages um, over the years. So quite familiar with the process and how things work. And uh, uh, had you know with the with my partner and a couple of people in the office here, we've we've got over probably combined 60 years of experience in the business. So um, we're here for anything you need, any questions you might have, um, and here to answer anything you have, any question issues you have. So we also have uh, Joe Fontana on the, on the call as well. Um, he is the owner of Fry the Coop. Um, you know, uh, Joe, if you want to give a few words about what you uh, plan on doing here in the community as far as the restaurant goes. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Joe. I'm the founder and owner of Fry the Coop. And, uh, you know, um, Brookline came to us with this project and uh, it kind of struck home. I, I grew up in Phillip Park, um, but I went to COD and uh, the member of Health Track for a long time. Uh, Glen Allen feels like home to me. So this is uh, a really cool special location for us just because um, where I grew up and it really feels like home. Um, so we uh, pride ourselves on delivering happiness. We do it through Nashville hot chicken, and uh, we put a lot of love into what we do, a lot of care into the community. We really try to uh, be a staple for the neighborhood. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited. I'm here to help with any questions and uh, show my support um, with anything. So really nice to meet everybody, and thank you for your time. So as far as... Um... The, the design goes, I know you guys all like the way it looks. And as far as materials go, I know, you know, using wood was a concern and things along those lines. Those are things we're all open to. Uh, we just thought, you know, the, the pergola and the, the lights and the, the wood would create a nice warm environment, nice aesthetic to the property. But if obviously those are concerns, those are things we can address. Um, any direct questions that you guys want to ask us? Well, I, I guess I would start with the concerns that a couple of commissioners brought up related to traffic and how you to access the building. And are you considering buying the lot to the east of you? Because that would solve a lot of problems. Uh, we've considered it. Unfortunately, so far has not been feasible um, as far as working within the budget of what we're trying to do uh, with the existing owner. But we do have an easement across the property, both the front and back, that's for ingress and egress that we think we could work with. Um, but we, again, we have tried to acquire that property, but it has not been successful yet to, you know, where we, where we can incorporate it into this development. You say you have egress across the property line that the question is, is if that building gets sold, will that still be there? I believe that easement stands still as it's recorded, the recorded easement, I believe. Um, I'm sort of, yeah, so it should, oh. it should stand, it should carry over, it should be grandfathered. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and in regards to um, circulation and signage, I know that was a question as well. Um, you know, we plan on having signs up throughout the entire parking lot, directing traffic, showing you know who goes where and what you know what you know what drive-through lane you're supposed to go through. If you're pulling in off of Roosevelt Road into our lot, then you know follow the sign to go to the drive-through. This you know to the right, and continue through. Uh, we would like to try and work with our neighboring properties. I mean, it looks like when this wall was all built, obviously the neighboring property has an easement with us as well to travel through our property. Otherwise, the only access they would have is off that private road. So the assumption right now is there some, should be some kind of you know easement as well on that private road since they're already accessing it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to get to their property. So you know the hopes are there's already an easement there. We are going to be ordering an updated survey to get all that figured out. But um, again, this is all per preliminary, preliminary for us. Um, CJ, could you talk about the commercial kitchen a little bit? Because I know that was a point or a question raised. Yeah, um, I'll talk a little bit, and then maybe Joe can take over. But uh, basically, you know, this is just a commissary kitchen. It's not going to be a crazy high volume kitchen. There's limited products of what they're making in there, but um, it's basically to service uh, I think four locations right now, uh, or five locations, and then this one as well. Um, Joe, you want to touch a little bit on what they'd be doing there and you know, hours of operation, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Right now in each one of our kitchens, we have a prep team in the back 
um, that preps the food. And we kind of, we fry our chicken twice. So they, uh, we call it a plot process called blanching. So they blanch all the chicken in the back and uh, we're trying to bring that into a uh, commissary. What's nice about what we do, what kind of um, CJ mentioned is that we really have a limited amount of what we do. We have a really small menu. So that kind of helps us to do a lot in a little space. Um, I think the commissary is going to be close to 5,000 square feet. Um, so nothing too crazy big. Um, we figure we'll have a team in there of about 15 people. Uh, we'd run hours from 7 a.m. to um, 3 p.m. So we think right now with our first shift, um, and we're hoping that this commissary can really carry us to about 10 locations before we'd have to um, build a second commissary like somewhere else. But um, we really like the idea of having multiple commissaries in the future for our business, um, just because it kind of helps, uh, you know, if something happens to one, you have another one that you can support it. Um, but that's kind of another reason why having a smaller commissary now to get us started is uh, pretty appealing. And, um, you know, we wouldn't have a lot of trucks, maybe two small, um, two small refrigerated trucks that would bring to all our locations. And um, we would uh, just be frying frying chicken there, putting sauces together. Um, that's really about it. So as far as uh, smells go, I know smells were an issue. Um, there's no grilling being done there. There's, you know, it would just be frying um, of, the, of the chicken and there, you know, it's a less, less smokier uh, cooking process versus grilling or anything along those lines. That's correct. It's water vapor that really comes off the fryers. Um, how does the fry the coop that's on that location get their product? So we would probably do a, uh, which is kind of silly, but we'd load up the van just like we'd be loading it up to go to our Elmhurst location, for example, and we would just drive it over, um, you know, across the parking lot. We wouldn't be, um, you know, on carts or anything like that because that can get pretty messy. And also, um, you know, you run into some variables with health concerns too, you know, so we would follow protocol of loading our van, just like we'd be going to Elmhurst, for example, um, and just drive it right over. I can see the urge to, hey, run over to the commissary and just pick up five of the, and then you'd have employees running back and forth. And I'm a, um. <laughs> Well, the, the way the building is gonna be lined up is with the drive-through in the back. So we wouldn't want to um, have any employees running product like in front of you know cars, obviously that's kind of embarrassing. Uh, the other thing too that you don't want to do that is because there starts to be a trail of like um, you know product that might spill or things like that and uh, you really kind of create this like path of an unwanted like streaks that I've seen happen at other restaurants and we wouldn't want to do that. Agreed. How, how many times a day do you deliver to your locations from so the right, commissary? Uh, right now uh, it's zero because we make everything in-house at the restaurants but we would do just one, once a day. Uh, and then sometimes in some locations, we'd load them up where we would only have to deliver maybe every other day. Okay, thank you. You know, I, I would really like to get back to this easement issue because yeah. uh, I'd like to have your council address this because obviously there's probably a cross easement there. And, and I, 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 I'm sure there was no uh, you know, traffic limited, but I, I'm certain that the intention would be for occasional traffic to move between the two sites uh, to get access to or from Roosevelt Road. But what you're talking about is really a driving lane with a substantial amount of, of trips. Uh, and I'm concerned that, are you concerned that um, uh, that you need some sort of, um, I want to say clarification or or some uh, actually something to, to guarantee that you have that access because it seems to me both of those are private properties and I'm, I'm just concerned that the um, that the intent original intent of the of the easements in no way anticipated uh, the, that type of use sure yeah I'd be, uh, be happy to speak to that there is a reciprocal access easement there now um, and to address the related question from before it, it does run with the land so unless both parties to the two sites were to agree to to dissolve that easement it will continue to 
run in existence. Uh, this project has been evolving and we will go back and to your exact question, be looking and confirming the scope of the easement. Um, it's certainly the intention is for both properties to function and work as one unit, um, which is very common as I'm sure everyone on the commission is aware um, to have commercial properties with joint access, but we do need to go back and, and get some further clarification. We wanted to get feedback from this commission on whether the project was viable and, and uh, some of the higher level determinations that we're talking about tonight uh, before we got into some of that detailed analysis. And as CJ mentioned, we'll be getting an updated survey, we're getting title work done. And, and so some of the questions may be answered as it relates to uh, Royal Glen Drive and the private access to. Yes, I was just I was just imagining that um, the the property next to, next to you was sold as a let's say a daycare center, and uh, I think that um, that would pro be problematic in terms of traffic, you know, continuous of traffic through there. Um, so I, I'm just raising it because I'm I'm just concerned that you you know that I think that. I could just anticipate a petition for a temporary restraining order. You know, and you, you, I think I think it should be a condition of of the approval that you have you have that somehow somehow worked out with the uh, with the owner. Yeah, we'd certainly intend to come back to the plan commission and to share further information as that evolves. Okay. Um, I have questions regarding. Um, like right now, how many, how many stack, how far do you stack cars normally in your drive-thru? Um, thinking about two drive throughs going through there. So I'm just thinking for the one entrance on the west side of the property, right? If everybody's coming through there and driving around um, and you've got parking and everything, how difficult is it going to be? Will you have a problem with cars backing up into the drive-through um, if people are trying to turn left onto Roosevelt? Because right now that strip mall is not heavily traveled, so sure. I don't know how many more times you know how many trips of turning and stuff like that. Or are you looking to have a right out only there? You know, I have been out of the few times that I've uh, gone through there now recently, I haven't had a problem making a left. Um, there's the lights that you can kind of catch uh, at Finley and then uh, towards um, 355. But I think, uh, and I haven't counted this, so Cal might know better how many cars it stacks, but it's uh, probably upwards of 15 maybe before we get to the other side of the property by the easement. Um, and then the other thing too is when um, someone gets their order, it's kind of staggered. So you have someone leave with an order and then they're, you know, there's a there's time in between each car getting their, getting their food. And I understand that, but I also, if you're going to have other businesses in here and people are, you know, that aren't fed through the drive-through and they're parking and everything, I, I'll be honest, I have some concerns in regards to the exit here, the, you know, the entrance and exit at, you know, cars coming in and then turning right as if they're gonna go into the drive-through, right? And doing the loop and whatever. And then people parking and just people leaving the property. Um, again, that part of Roosevelt Road, I travel quite a bit, but right now the property's not being used. I'm, I'm trying to think in the future with more use there and people going there more frequently and more cars there, um, is that going to be a problem with cars wait, if there's a car waiting to turn left and it, and it's post COVID 530 at night on a Tuesday, Roosevelt road there can be very, very crowded just with people going to and from work. So you so also, I'm, trying, I, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Cal. Oh, okay. Sorry. 
Yeah, so just to, to jump in there, um, sorry to cut you off. I, I, I was just uh, trying to get in. There's, a, there's another option here. It's just not the one straight exit. There's, there's a left that you can go through the parking and there's another easement on the front of the parking that goes through the neighboring property. So it brings you back out to Royal Glen Drive. Again, so though, two, two options. Again, is there is there an easement currently for use of Royal Glen Drive? We would that, think, that, we would think yeah. there has to be since that's where the that'd be the only way that they'd access the neighboring property. But we're, that's okay. something we're going to look into. Okay, then that's a different situation. Correct. So I would want this is just my opinion. The exit to the west. I would want to be a right right out only because again, if if somebody wants to go left, Royal Glen Drive seems more of the appropriate place for that to happen. I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but um, or I'd like to get some kind of feedback from police or something about it. Tracy, I just wanted to mention really quickly that um, it was noted in the staff report, but just also, you know, for the record that um, IDOT will be taking a look at this as well, um, because it's on Roosevelt Road. And so they'll have some input as to, you know, what the access okay. should be off of Roosevelt Road as well. Okay, I know there's a center turn lane the whole way through here. I, I get that. The, so turning in isn't the problem. I'm concerned about it coming out, right? Especially because I'm thinking that with it being on Roosevelt with the condos, apartments, townhomes, you know, all of the residential that's right in this area, I tend to believe this could be, especially if you're going to have two, maybe three or more restaurants that this could be a very, very busy place. Um, Chairman Locke, can I share my screen? Oh, yeah, not... I mean, Katie's already sharing. Okay, yeah, oh. she's she's unsharing. Now go I'm ahead. Sorry, <laughs> is she showing something? Not anymore. I was showing the site plan, if that's what you wanted me to pull up. Otherwise, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, my bad. I was only looking at the screen with everybody's faces. So um, I understand um, Commissioner Hemminglet went about, you know, the stacking into the site, but usually um, the those with jurisdiction over the roadways won't have as much concern about stacking on the property because that's not the issue that's related to the road. Um, but they do have questions about stacking and getting into um, the site. So this is a, a mountable median right now. And um, one of the discussions that took place um, amongst the staff um, engineers about this project and the planners was, um, you know, there's right now there's no stacking um, other than right. maybe one or two spaces on this mountable median and creating um, you know, a left turning lane here may be required by IDOT, but still you'd only be able to stack um, three cars to get in. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I, I'm thinking about the incoming also. Um, we don't want to get into a situation of, which I don't think this site would necessarily have, like the Starbucks situation on Roosevelt Road in Glen Ellen, where people can't get off. Here, you can actually get in and get off the property mm -hmm. quite a bit or off the road quite a bit where there is a different situation. Correct, yeah. So the stacking would be, you know, probably eight or nine cars here and then, you know, through here. So stacking into the public right, right of way based on the, the design that they currently have proposed is not, um, you know, something that we believe um, will be a concern, but the circulation, which, you know, in order to get to the drive through lanes is um, completely on other people's property is, um, you know, obviously one of the issues that we were looking at. We, we were trying to brainstorm um, some other ideas on how you might be able to handle it all within the site. Um, 
and you know going northbound um, through the the separation between the two buildings and maybe heading to the west to go to fry the coop or you know that there's there's some other you know options we had about you know making u-turns in the back of the property there's there's probably um, some other architectural engineering solutions that they might look at as well, but certainly traffic and circulation are going to be something if they go do go forward with this, they'll need to submit the traffic study, um, contact with IDOT, et cetera. And, you know, one of the concerns we also had was the emptying of the garbage right at the confluence of um, you know, where two stacking lanes and loading and, you know, there's going to be a lot of activity back there. And oftentimes you can't demand when the uh, refuse haulers are going to come. Um, you can pick a day, but, and if you're lucky, you might be able to pick, um, you know, morning or afternoon. But, um, so those were just issues we wanted to raise for plan commission discussion and consideration, and that's all. Well, I, I see what you're trying to tell us that please address some of the other issues because between IDOT and um, these agreements, uh, if they can't work that out, then the, the project won't fly. So let's us make an assumption that, that the traffic can be worked out. And what do we think about the other uh, items that you're asking for clarification or uh, feedback on? Is that correct? Can it, we it get just, that list just put up so we can make sure we go through and address it? Yeah. I mean, Katie, Katie was your six items or seven. Yeah. And Mary, I can go through these. Um, I'll Maybe just no. go through here. Um, the, Eight. We, okay. We've talked about the circulation, the loading and delivery areas for all the tenants. Um, can they, can somebody address, will all these tenants be, of those you know, will they all be, have set delivery times? of when they will receive goods um, or, uh, you know, it, will that be done to try to alleviate and will any of these tenants be serviced else through the back of the building? We know the commissary will and, um, but if they can describe a little bit about that. Um, I have a problem with the refuse just because of the fact of where it is and crossing traffic um, during drive-throughs. Um, bare bulb signage. I'm okay with the bare bulb signage. Um, I was the one who was fine with um, putting up um, Andy's Andy's custard. <laughs> and I mean, if we're going to have bare bulb signage, Roosevelt Road's the place to have it. The festoon lighting, I'm fine. And I'm fine with the building material and design. It's a little different, but I think it looks, it'll be nice, especially for that area. It'll really pop that, that area could use a lot of more current design and um, something different to bring your eyes to it. Um, so I'd like to know a little bit more about loading and delivery and how that will happen for tenants. And also um, ideas of where maybe the refuse area could be moved to other than where it is right now. So the Maybe. refuse the refuse area could be moved anywhere in the back of the space, pretty much. I mean, it's gonna take up a few parking spaces no matter where we put it. So, I mean, we can move that around wherever you guys think works best. Either way, I mean, just like any building with a drive-through, they're gonna be crossing the drive-through to, to unload garbage, um, just like any property. Um, so, but we can move it further back so it's maybe not as congested in that corner, um, what you guys are referring to. But we would obviously hope that you know we could schedule a contract with an early morning pickup before any of the drive-through traffic is there. Just like the the food delivery, any of the other deliveries that are happening, we could try and schedule. Most food deliveries, I believe, do happen early in the morning. Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, they're all in the morning. Yeah. All so, so the the as far as the commissary deliveries and the two restaurant deliveries, they should all be in the morning prior to the, the drive-throughs opening. Um, and the, it's the commissary trucks leaving the commissary would also be in the morning before the restaurants open because they have to deliver food to the restaurant before they open at 11 a.m. So all that commissary traffic and restaurant traffic should be out of the way prior to the drive-through opening. 
um, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there'll be occasions like a snowstorm where the truck is late and <laughs> it will mess things up a little bit, but that's just on occasion. It's not going to happen all the time. Um, and as far as the refuse goes, like I said, we could move it further back if you guys believe that would be a cleaner place to put it or you know, less traffic congested area because you know, again, we would hope they would do early morning pickups, but if they can't for some reason, then you know, maybe it would be better to put it near the back versus where it is now. And is that ref is the refuse area actually self-contained? Is it in basically it's it's walled off and everything? Yeah, so we would we would build a brick enclosure with the, with the gate um, as well. So right now, the refuse on this property is right up against the, the building itself on the back wall. We wanted to pull it away from the building just because it's cleaner, um, you know, for the for the property itself and the tenants. Um, you know, we wanted to get it away from the building so that you don't have rodent issues and things like that in the future. Because um, whenever you have garbage next to a warm building, it's just a bad place <laughs> to be for, uh, you know, it's, it's a great place to be for rodents. So that's why we wanted to push it away from the property to keep it a little bit cleaner, clean up that entire backside of the property so that's a little more appealing as people are driving through for the drive through as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, any other commissioners have feedback? they'd like to give that hasn't been given already? Yeah, just a little bit. Go ahead. Am I up? Yep. Yeah, you know, the, the whole idea of a commercial kitchen commissary, uh, you know, I don't know. It, obviously, it's got to make sense number numbers wise, but I'm not sure it's the highest and best use for this this location, I do realize the existing building has a ge geometry that kind of, you know, has a larger space to the rear on the east end of the building. So, you know, maybe it maybe it's it's less usable for a storefront type property or type use. Um, it just to me, I, I think I'd find a, a better place in a light industrial strip area that could serve as a commissary that would you know have some room to grow down the road or what have you but with that said um in this this access uh issue you know it's one thing if you could work out all the agreements um it's another thing is you're going to have confused people driving um if i'm a repeat customer yeah i know where i'm going but um unless you have signage also that occupies the other property um, and steering people to where they need to go. I, I think it's, um, it's really a challenge you've put before you. Um, as far as adaptive reuse, I applaud that. I think if we can find ways to use some of these buildings that are underutilized and be creative like you're doing, I, you know, I, I like the approach. It's just the challenges are are seemingly still kind of large. So that's my two cents. Thank you. We we recognize that that's the you know, the difficulties that there might be on the first visit to the center for the traffic flow, but. You know, just like any center, <laughs> every time I go to a Chick-fil-A, I don't know where to go sometimes. Or every time I go to a Portillo's, I don't know where to go sometimes the first visit. And I think we become creatures of habit where they would start to identify where to go and we would do our best with the signage. But you are right, there will be some some uh, growing pains in the first couple visits. All right, any other commissioners want to add uh, recommendations or thoughts or feedback? And I, I can't see you as well because I have the, the feedback form up here. So if somebody's raising their hand, please just unmute and say something. <laughs> there we go. Um, I, I think what I hear is that, uh, or see, is that most of the commissioners feel like you've heard what they had to say also, or they've heard, you've heard the issues and the, our thoughts on this. Um, and we don't need to say them and beat you over the head. So um well I, we, we thank you guys for your time yeah. you're very welcome and thank you for considering investing in glen ellen we hope this uh, works out for you absolutely uh, we, we hope it does too so let us know if you guys have any more concerns obviously um, the village staff has been great to work with thus far 
And, uh, you know, we'd love to continue working with them, let them know your concerns, obviously, so we can work through those. Okay. Well, I will hope to see you again in, in something other than a pre-op in a formal uh, formal presentation. So Great. good luck. Thank you. Thank you for All your right. time. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, the next agenda item is a trustee's report. Bill, are you still with us and do you have a report? I don't see him unmuting. Oh, there he is. He might be unmuting. He's got two devices here. Uh, okay. Hey, it's Bill. Um, Hi. I've got a report. First thing I want to report is really the chicken from uh, Fry the Coop is really good. So, uh, <laughs> and you wait till they all good. get off the phone before you, you mention that. I hope they. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to like try to sway anybody in advance, but I do like the chicken. So um, the only two things I was going to mention is the Apex development uh, request for um, for the uh, variant was uh, was uh, pushed again to the next meeting because uh, some trustees are waiting for some more information. So uh, we still haven't voted on that. Uh, and that variance to allow the the things to be added to the roof. And then um, the other one that we voted on was the uh, easement for allowing the walkway between Main Street and the parking garage. And that that's going to be, uh, actually that's under underway right now. It looks kind of interesting. Um, I'm not very good at like figuring out what plans look like, but it looks kind of interesting the way that it's all getting put together. So um, if you get a chance, you can walk by and take a look at that. Okay. Those are the only two things I was going to talk about. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing them. I appreciate it. Um, sure thing. Yeah. Um, next agenda item, I think, is the, the chair's report, which I don't have one this evening. Then we jump to the staff report. Kelly, Stacy, do you have anything tonight for us? Stacy, did you have anything? I do have a couple of updates. Oh, go ahead. And then if you don't cover what I was going to cover, I'll cover it. All right. Um, so next meeting, we will have on the agenda two items. We have uh, the official zoning map um, that I'll be going through. And then also uh, another pre-app. Um, and that would be for a co-working office space on Main Street in what was, um, is the vacant McMays um, on Main Restaurant. So those two items will be coming before the plan commission for the next meeting next week, um, the special meeting on the 18th. Thank you to those who um, are gonna be able to make that meeting. And then um, I believe we're also gonna have an item on the agenda for the last meeting in March. That'll be the zoning code text amendment related to the C5B district um, that um, you guys had asked us to bring forward related to those setbacks um, and potentially removing um, single family dwelling units as a special use in that district. So those are two items to be, you know, coming before you here shortly. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Uh, all I would do is add, um, we, I think we at the last meeting mentioned that it was Cole Jackson's last meeting. Yeah. Um, so he did part um, for, um, to be closer to family and have kind of his dream job. Um, and so we have posted that position. And I just wanted to take a minute to thank um, Kelly and Katie for uh, the great job that they're doing managing with a, uh, a third of the team gone. And we have the highest number of zoning variations in the queue that we've ever had. I think Katie's handling 12 zoning variations wow. in addition to all of um, her uh, PUDs and other mixed use developments and um, a variety of other projects. And so I, they are both putting in a ton of hours and I just wanted to thank them for all their great work. Thank you. Well, we'll thank them for you too. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Applause, applause. Yeah. Anything else? Be oh, go ahead, John. Mary, I got to say, Mary and I go back a long time, you know, back to the plan commission days. And I want to say this staff is just outstanding. I mean, other staff was good. But you guys, what you do, the detail you have, the questions you answer, is just phenomenal. So I want to thank you from, from experience. It, it, we know it's very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Keep up the good work. 
Anybody else have something else they want to bring before the plan commission this evening? Katie, yeah. Um, I would just like to share that we're also hiring planning intern. We still have our current planning intern, but um, he had he um, graduates in December, so we typically prefer uh, students that are able to stay from, I guess, June to May. So um, he'll be leaving. Um, I'm assuming when he. <laughs> It gets his next position. He wants just a more rounded internship experience before he um, is hired elsewhere as a full-time staff. So um, if you know of any uh, planning graduate students, I think it's only UIC that has a planning program and master's program, but feel free to share. And I've shared the post on my LinkedIn. If you want to share, it's also on the village post. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Adrian Diaz is his name, our current intern. And while you might not see his face here at the meetings, he does a lot of the background research and puts a lot of information together, does the mailings, um, some inspections for us. He does a lot of work, so. Yes, he's presenting at his first Zoning Board of Appeals on the 23rd, so that's exciting. All right, does anybody else have anything to come before the Planned Commission meeting tonight? All right, I uh, move that we adjourn. All in favor, say aye. <laughs> Press your space bar. Aye. And, aye. <laughs> and say yeah. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. All right, All right thank aye. you. Bye.